One of the first things that people want to know about when they get a new DVR for their home security system is how to hook it up to the internet so that they can actually view all the cameras remotely. Um, the coolest thing about this feature is that you can be anywhere in the world really. And as long as you have some sort of connection to the internet or even through a cell phone plan, you can hook up to your DVR uh, remotely and view all of your cameras so you can see what's going on at your home or your business. A few of the things that are lying here on the floor are pretty much everything you need to get started in setting it up. Um, the only two things that I'm not showing here are the monitor. You need some sort of TV or monitor to hook the DVR to so you can change all its settings and you need a modem and a router that's connected to the internet. Now I'm going to assume that you already have an internet connection with a computer attached or in, uh, at your home or your business. So the next things that you're going to need um, as far as the equipment goes is you're going to need the, uh, the DVR. Um, this one is actually one from securitycameraking.com. Their DVRs are really cool because there's a lot of awesome features um, when, when it comes to connecting to it remotely. So other than the DVR, you know, you're going to need your power supply. That's a definite. Uh, for obviously for the DVR and then you're gonna need a camera for testing or if you already have your cameras uh, This is just an old camera. I use for testing uh, You're gonna need a cat5 cable or cat6 some sort of internet cable so you can connect the DVR to your router um, a mouse um, the, these DVRs usually come with a mouse I just happen to have a wire wireless one that I can uh, connect with the USB onto the DVR itself then uh, you can choose between an HDMI cable or a VGA cable for these DVRs. Um, they actually have different ports on the back. So some of the ports back here are VGA, HDMI, and then they even have a video out that's composite if you have a BNC monitor that you can connect to or if you have an adapter that can ex convert BNC to uh, composite. The other thing is the power supply for the camera. So uh, this one happens to be a 12 volt, 0.5 amp. Um, it's all I really need for this camera here to be able to power it on. I also have a plug and play cable here, and the plug and play cable is cool because uh, it's got you know two different ends, um, and each end of the cable has a BNC for the video, and then there's a male connector for the power and then there's a female connector for the power and uh, that's pretty much everything you need to get started as far as hooking it up to the internet now I'll show you the steps of where all these wires get connected to each other make it really easy for you to understand this as you can see here I have a small Vizio monitor that I'm going to be using to put all the settings on the DVR then I've got my router here which is a Cisco router and I've got my modem uh, which is connected to the internet and already attached and configured onto my router. So once you've verified that you already have internet connection, you can connect it you know, to your computer to test it out and you see that you do have an internet connection, then the next thing you can do is start hooking up all of your hardware. Cool thing about this monitor here is there's a bunch of connectors in the back um, for how you want to connect the DVR. So um, I have the option to use uh, where it says RGB PC, that's actually the VGA connector. I've got a composite connector, uh, set of connectors there that I can use if I wanted to, and then I've got HDMI 1 and 2. So what I'm going to use is the HDMI cable. Uh, it gives me the best quality of video, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that one since I have access to it, but it's not necessarily what you have to. Whichever one you connect it to with your DVR, um, it's going to work as long as you have that input selected on the television you're using. Uh, you can also use a computer monitor because they have this VGA, this, uh, VGA cable here that you can use. I've got my HDMI wire here. Um, this is the HDMI cable. I'm going to go ahead and just plug it into the first input. Then I've already got my power connected over to the monitor. Turn it on, make sure it's all good when it comes on and then select, I can select the input, make sure it's on HDMI 1, and I've got my DVR here, I'm going to go ahead and set it down here, and connect my HDMI cable to the input in the back, or I should say the output of the DVR, then I'm going to go ahead and plug in my power supply for the DVR, alright, now I've got the power 
supply connected here to the DVR. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my mouse that I have here, my USB mouse, onto the USB port. Using my plug and play cables, I'm going to go ahead and plug in to the first video input of the DVR. So this power end here, I'm going to go ahead and plug into the power supply for the camera. The end that goes on the DVR side is going to be the male end of the power connector. Um, just so you know, the male ends, a lot of people confuse these for female ends, but they actually have a pin on the inside here, which you can kind of see, and that pin makes that a male. Uh, these are actually the female connectors, even though it is a pin here, this pin goes inside, so this one's considered the female end. Then you're left with the other end of the plug and play cable which will plug into the camera. I've got my testing camera here. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And then I also have to plug in the internet cable so that we can get a connection to it to be able to start modifying the settings and connecting it to the internet. So this is a Cat5 and we're going to connect this to the back of the router. So on the back of our router here, we have this port here that's got the yellow sticker on it that says internet. That's what's coming in from our modem for our internet signal. And then this router has an extra four ports on the back here and these are going to be for any hardware that we're going to connect to give it the uh, internet connection. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the DVR's network cable into uh, any one of these ports will be fine and um, I'm going to make sure my computer and everything else is plugged back into the router. Now that I have everything connected here I can go ahead and power on the DVR and I can see here that it's booting up because the the uh, lights are blinking. I can see it on the reflection here of the monitor I can see that the lights on and then my cameras on so there we go we have <coughs> video now when I first powered on the DVR here I get a couple of messages on the screen one of the messages here on the screen at the moment are that there's uh, no available HDD for recording that means that the DVR currently does not have a hard drive in it um, I don't have one in here yet, but I'll go ahead and install one after I have everything set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK to exit out of this message window. The next window that's here is a Startup Wizard. Um, I'm not going to go through the wizard. I'm just going to go ahead and manually put in all the settings. So now if I go ahead and right click on the window here, I'm going to get a menu uh, system, a little menu. So on this menu I can select main menu and there's a login that I have to put in in order to start changing all of the settings. Now all the DVRs are going to be different so find out what the admin password is for your DVR. If you're using this type of DVR from Security Camera King, the uh, default admin admin. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. Now I'm in the main menu and in this main menu you have options that you can change and um, if you go ahead and click on settings you'll see that there's a network setting here that you can configure. So when you go in here um, you'll have the ability to change the IP address, the mat, subnet mask, gateway, TCP ports, um, all that information there that's going to help you get connected to the internet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this IP address is a unique IP address for the DVR in my network. Um, if you put the same IP address as another device on your network, it's not going to work. It's going to tell you that that IP address isn't valid. So um, I'm checking here and this IP address, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it at 110. So this device, the DVR, is going to be 110. Then subnet mask I'm going to leave as 255, 255, 255, and 0. Um, the gateway is going to be the IP address of your router. 
and mine happens to be 192.168.1.1. I'm going to leave it that way, that's the default there. Um, TCP and UDP port, those are usually the ports that um, you can connect remotely with on like a cell phone or a tablet device. I'm going to go ahead and leave that TCP port as 37777, so four sevens. Uh, and then I'm going to leave it at 3778 for the UDP port. Um, HTTP port, um, there's a lot of service providers that don't allow the use of port 80. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change mine to port 88. That's the default one that I'm going to use. And then the RSTP port I'll leave as 554. Max connections, that's how many connections to the DVR at one time uh, it, that you're going to leave it capable of doing. So I'm going to leave it at 10. That's going to be, um, that's going to say that 10, up to 10 people can log into the DVR at the same time. Then you've got the uh, preferred DNS and the alternate DNS, which I'm going to go ahead and just use Google's uh, DNS server uh, addresses. And that's 8.8.8.8 for the preferred, and then the alternate is 8.8.4.4. Uh, everything else I'm just going to leave it as is. These are the most important settings here to go ahead and get started um, with assigning a static IP address to your DVR itself. Now it's saying, are you sure you want to apply these uh, settings? It's going to go ahead and restart the system after it. I'm going to hit OK. As you can see, it booted up just fine. And again, it's telling me that there's no hard drive available for recording. And I'm going to exit out of that and take this checkbox off of the startup wizard because I don't want it to pop up every single time I boot up the DVR. The next thing you're going to want to do is port forward your router. This is going to be necessary in order to connect to your DVR from a remote location. If you were to just type your external IP address into the browser, your router is just not going to know which device you're trying to connect to. So there could be multiple computers on this network, there could be multiple devices, and you need to tell your router which one to specifically connect to by assigning some sort of map to all of the ports that you have configured. So the first thing you're going to want to do is log into your router so that you can change these settings. And most of the routers are going to have a default IP address of 192.168.1.1. I'm going to go ahead and just put that in the URL bar and search for it, and it'll take me to the login for my router. So I'll go ahead and put in my password. Most routers are defaulted to admin admin. Um, some are even defaulted to admin password, but you'll have to check with your manual or search online for that information if you don't know what it is for your specific router. Now the management part of the router is going to look different uh, depending on which router you have. Um, if you have the same one that I do, then you would go to the security section and there's actually an apps and gaming uh, icon there, or a tab and under that tab is where you're going to find the single port forwarding or port range forwarding that's where this is where you're going to add it um, most of the time in routers it's going to be apps and gaming uh, what the tab is going to be called so look for something that either says that or single port forwarding that's where you're going to go ahead and add these ports that you want to forward to so I'm going to go ahead and add a new one and I'm going to call this uh, I'm just going to call it DVR1 and this will be port 88. This is the port that we set up on the DVR to connect to and I'm going to put the IP address of my DVR which is 192.168 so I'll add a dot one and then over here I'll just add 110 and save it and I'm going to make sure enabled is selected too. If you don't have enabled selected it's not going to port forward correctly. Protocol you can leave as both um, some DVRs will show you uh, TCP and UDP, just make sure it's both of them on there. Then, now this is going to work for you to connect to your DVR externally, but if you try to connect it using uh, the software for your cell phone or your tablet, it's not going to connect. And the reason for this is because you have to add the other two ports that were in there that we set up. So, let me go in here and add that really quick. The um, TCP port is what I'm going to add. So I'm going to put DVR TCP and 
you can call this whatever you want. That's just a description, basically, so you know what this is forwarding to. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the 37777, and same thing for the internal port, 37777, and leave this at both again, and also put in the address to the DVR, which is 1.110 at the end. And then I also want to add in the DVR UDP port, and that's going to be 37778. Same thing for the internal again, uh, 37778. And the IP address of the DVR stays the same. And I'm going to save both of these, make sure that they're enabled, and go ahead and hit apply and OK it. And that's the only thing I'm going to really have to change here inside um, in order to port forward this DVR. So I'm going to sign out of my router. Open up your browser, make sure it's open, and type in the address of your DVR. And this is going to be the internal address that you set up statically. So that's 192.168.1.110. And you're going to put colon 88, which is the port number of the DVR that you're connecting to for the web service. So this will take you to the login page. If you've never been to the login page before, this will actually ask you to download and install the web service, which you'll go ahead and click allow down here at the bottom. Now, if for some reason it's not allowing you to install it correctly, you're gonna have to make sure that the settings on your Internet Explorer is set up to allow it. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to tools, internet options, then security, custom level, and then scroll down to the area where you see download unsigned ActiveX controls and make sure this is selected to prompt. Uh, by default it's usually selected to disable and what will happen is you'll, you'll see that it's trying to install the web service but it won't actually allow you to install it until you make it prompt. Then when you go back and restart this page and reload it, it'll actually show you a button that says install. That's where you're going to install the web service. You're going to wait about a minute or two for it to do the full installation and it'll open up to this page with the web service. Now for this DVR that I'm using, um, it, you can actually type in admin admin because I haven't changed the username and password yet in there and then click on login and now you're inside the web service of the DVR and again you'll see there's no disk information here and this is just letting you know that there's no hard drive uh, installed in the actual DVR. So I'm not going to worry about that just yet. And you'll see up here in config, this is where you're going to see all of your settings of your DVR pop up. And I'm going to go ahead and click on network. And I'll see that these are all the settings that I set up um, manually on the DVR when we were setting it up at, at, on the monitor. So this is all going to stay the same, um, but this is just to show you how to connect internally with the DVR. So when you want to connect to your DVR externally, you're going to have to find out the external IP address to this network that you're currently in. Because if you're out of state or out of the country or you're trying to connect to it with your cell phone and you're not on the network, you're never going to be able to see the DVR with this address up here because this is just the internal IP address. If you want to find out what your external IP address is, you're just going to go over here to Google and you're going to type in what is my IP and that should bring up your IP address. Now you can take that IP address and use that to connect to the DVR from an external location but the problem is that if you do it from while you're inside the network it, it's not going to work. So I can go ahead and take this IP address and put it in here and put colon 88 at the end like you would uh, with the internal IP address but it's never actually going to connect. So what you want to do is go to a location where you're outside of the network and try to connect that way. And as long as you're not in that same network that the DVR is on, you can use that IP address and get in. So here's an example. All right, now I'm on another computer that's outside of the network. And I can go ahead and put in the IP address that's my external IP address of where my DVR is, along with the colon 88, which is the port number that I'm going to be connecting to and it takes me right there to the DVR. I can go ahead and type in my password, log in, 
and everything works as planned. Um, I can go ahead and open up and I can see that it's showing me the camera that I have there for testing. Everything is good to go.